In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about sertraline, especially what it does to the body and about specific side effects. This is especially important if you're about to start sertraline or you're already established on it. I'm also going to answer three interesting questions that I have been asked in my clinics. Can sertraline cause diabetes? Can it lower your sex drive? And can you develop a risk of bone fractures? These are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking any medication. And I will answer these at the end of the video. So this video will help you to understand more about sertraline and allow you to make a logical decision about taking it. So let's get started. So what is sertraline? Sertraline is a type of antidepressant known as a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, SSRI for short. It's often used to treat depression and also sometimes panic attacks, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. It helps many people recover from depression and has fewer unwanted side effects than the older type of antidepressants called tricyclic antidepressants, such as amitriptyline. So how does it work? Sertraline works by increasing the levels of a mood-enhancing chemical called serotonin in your brain. This helps to improve your mood so you will feel better. You may notice that you sleep better and get on with people more easily because you're less anxious. You'll hopefully be more relaxed about things that used to worry you. And remember, sertraline won't change your personality. It will simply help you feel like yourself again. So when will you feel better? Now don't expect to feel better overnight. Some people feel worse during the first few weeks of treatment before they begin to feel better. You may see an improvement in your symptoms after one or two weeks although it usually takes from four to six weeks before you feel the full benefits. That's because it takes around a week for sertraline levels to build up in your body, and then a few weeks longer for your body to adapt and get used to it. And don't stop taking sertraline just because you feel it is not helping your symptoms. Give the medicine at least six weeks to work. So who may not be able to take it? Sertraline is not suitable for some people, to make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor if you have ever had an allergic reaction to sertraline or any other medicine. If you have a heart problem or take any medicines that affect your heartbeat, this is because sertraline can make your heart beat faster or cause an irregular heartbeat. If you are trying to get pregnant, already pregnant or are breastfeeding. If you have glaucoma, because sertraline can increase the pressure in your eye. If you have epilepsy or are having electroconvulsive treatment, this is because sertraline may increase your risk of having a fit or seizure. And tell your doctor if you have had any other medicines for depression that you are taking now or have taken in the past. This is because some antidepressants can affect sertraline and this may cause a very high blood pressure even after you've stopped taking them. So what's the dosage? Sertraline is available as 25, 50 or 100 mg tablets. The usual dose of sertraline is 50 mg a day in adults, but your doctor may start you on a lower dose, then increase it gradually to a maximum dose of 200 mg a day. And if you have liver problems, your doctor might give you a lower dose. So how do you take it? Take sertraline once a day with or without food. You can choose to take sertraline at any time as long as you stick to the same time every day. Now, if you have trouble sleeping, it's best to take it in the morning. Is there any food or drink you need to avoid? Now, don't drink grapefruit juice while you're taking this medicine because this can increase the amount of sertraline in your body and increase the risk of side effects. And drinking alcohol while taking sertraline may make you feel sleepy. It might be best to stop drinking alcohol until you see how this medicine makes you feel. So how long do you take sertraline for? Once you're feeling better, it's likely that you'll continue to take sertraline for several more months. Stopping before that time can make depression come back. 
Most doctors recommend that you take antidepressants for six months to a year after you no longer feel depressed. What do you do if you forget to take it? If you occasionally forget to take a dose, skip the missed dose and take your next dose the next day at the usual time. Never take two doses at the same time to make up for a forgotten one. And if you forget doses often, it may help to set an alarm to remind you. So what if you take too much? The amount of sertraline that can lead to an overdose varies from person to person. Taking too much can cause symptoms such as being sick, shaking, feeling sleepy, feeling dizzy, fast heart rate, fits or seizures. So how do you stop taking sertraline? If you have been feeling better for six months or more, your doctor may suggest coming off sertraline. Your doctor will probably recommend reducing your dose gradually over several weeks or longer if you have been taking sertraline for a long time. This is to help prevent any withdrawal symptoms you might get as a reaction to coming off the medicine. Now these can include feeling dizzy, feeling sick, numbness or tingling in the hands or feet, trouble sleeping, feeling agitated or anxious, headaches, shaking. So what are the common side effects? Now these include feeling sick, headaches, being unable to sleep or feeling sleepy, diarrhea, dry mouth, feeling dizzy, feeling tired or weak. So what are the serious side effects? Book an appointment with your doctor if you get changes in your periods such as heavy bleeding, spotting or bleeding between periods. If you have a weight gain or weight loss without trying, if you have feelings of overwhelming happiness, excessive enthusiasm or excitement, or a feeling of restlessness that means you cannot sit or stand still. Or the whites of your eyes turn yellow or your skin turns yellow. These can be signs of liver problems. Or you cough up blood or have blood in your pee or black or red poo or blood in your vomit. These can be signs of bleeding from the gut. If you're bleeding from the gums or get bruises that appear without a reason or that get bigger. And immediate action is required and call the emergency services if you get chest pain or pressure or shortness of breath. If you get headaches, have trouble focusing, have memory problems, cannot think clearly, have weakness, have a seizure or fit or lose your balance these can be signs of low sodium levels. If you have thoughts about harming yourself or ending your life. If you get severe dizziness or pass out. If you get painful erections that last longer than two hours. This may happen even if you're not having sex. Get any heavy bleeding or bleeding that you cannot stop, such as cuts or nosebleeds that do not stop within 10 minutes. And finally, if you have a serious allergic reaction. Now, these are not all the side effects of sertraline. And for a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. Some frequently asked questions in my clinic are related to the long-term side effects of taking sertraline. The first question is whether sertraline can cause diabetes. Taking sertraline for more than a year has been linked to an increased risk of getting diabetes. You should be regularly checked for this by having a blood test, so check with your doctor. The second question is whether sertraline can affect sexual drive. Sexual side effects from antidepressants like sertraline include decreased libido, problems getting an erection, and difficulty achieving orgasm in both sexes. In some cases, this can continue even after stopping the medicine. So speak to your doctor if you are worried because you can switch to another medication or develop strategies to manage the side effects. And lastly, I am asked if there is a risk of getting bone fractures whilst taking sertraline. A review of epidemiological studies by the MHRA, 
the UK's medicines watchdog, found that mainly in patients aged 50 years or older, showed an increased risk of bone fractures in patients receiving SSRIs. The mechanism leading to this increased risk is unclear, so speak to your healthcare provider if you are worried or concerned. I will provide the links to all the studies below and discuss other treatments that can help depression in another video. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see new videos that are posted every week. And hit the notification bell if you want to get notified about new videos. And please make a comment in the comment section to tell me what you enjoyed about this video or what topics you'd like to learn more about. You can also check out my other videos.